Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to make something that looks exactly like this here in Adobe Photoshop. It's a fairly long and somewhat complex process, so let's just get started right away. Let's start by going into Bridge, and you will find here in the Period 6 folder, or go to your own Period folder, a folder called Instagram. What I would like for you to do is right-click on this Instagram folder, and please choose Copy, not Cut. And then go to your own folder and, and open it up and right click and choose paste. That's going to copy and paste that Instagram folder into your folder. Here it is. Let's go ahead and open it up. And you can see we've got bottom, middle, and top bar in there. Perfect. Let's leave those for now. Let's go back to period six. If you scroll down to the very bottom, here's a file called instagramfilters.atn. I want you to double click on this and that's gonna load up Photoshop and it's gonna load these filters up for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. You can see Photoshop is opening up. And if I look here in my Actions palette, you can see those six filters have loaded up for me. If you can't see your Actions palette, go ahead and come over here and go to Window and choose Actions, and that will get that to pop up for me, or for you, excuse me. And then you can just resize this. Yours is probably real small like this when it first comes up. Go ahead and drag that down so you can see all of them, especially these ones here at the bottom, because these are the ones we're going to be using. All right, I'm going to go back into Bridge, and here's the photo I'm going to be working on. So I'll just go ahead and double-click on that to get it to open in Photoshop. And the first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that the resolution of this photo matches up with the resolution of the bars we're going to be working on. And the resolution of those bars, the top, middle, and bottom bar, is 300 pixels per inch. So we need to come up here to our image and go to Image Size, and we need to change this to 300 make sure you uncheck this box that says resample if you don't do that you're going to create a monster of a file that's way too big for anything that we want to be doing today so uncheck resample and if you do when you type in 300 you'll notice these numbers up here will not change if this number jumps up to five six seven eight hundred megabits megabytes you've got you didn't uncheck resample so just make sure you did that please and go ahead and press ok you won't see any change, but something behind the scenes has changed, and that makes life much easier for us. Uh, do not proceed until you have done that step. That is very important. So now we need to draw a box around this area of our photo that we want to turn into a uh, Instagram. I'm going to grab my rectangular marquee tool, keyboard shortcut M, and I'm going to start right up here and just click and drag down a box around this part of the photograph. Before I let go though, I do want to stop and look at that number right next to the W, that 3.020. I need to remember that. I need to write that down. I need to put it in my phone. I need to take a picture of it. And then I'm just going to make sure when I let go of my mouse that I don't accidentally move it a little bit. So I'm going to remember 3.020. I'm going to let go. And that number is locked into my put that number aside for a little bit. Let's go over and let's choose one of these filters to run. I don't know. Let's try Sierra. I'm going to go ahead and click on Sierra and then I'm going to press the play button right here. Don't click these boxes out here anywhere. Those don't do anything that is useful for now. So go ahead and click on play and you can see Photoshop will do all of the work for me. And if I look down at my layers palette, I've got three layers now instead of just one. If you run an action and it, and it has a layer one copy in it, that means that this action is designed to have a vignette. And so what you need to do is take a little moment and grab the eraser tool over here. Its keyboard shortcut is E. And you want to use a circle or brush that is a little bit smaller than the size of the box. So that's probably too big, so I'm going to shrink that down. And then you absolutely want to right click and make sure your hardness here is at zero. So I'm going to take my brush here and just erase out the middle of this photo leaving the edges a little bit darker. You can come and check it by turning this layer off and then back on and you should be able to see that nice darkened edges. That's the sign of a good vignette. If you don't like the action that you ran and you want to try a different one, you need to delete these layers before you do. To do that, I'm just going to click on each one of these layers and click them, drag them down to this little garbage can down here. And then I will draw a new selection. The only problem with that is now my number changed. Now my number's not 3.020. Now it's 2.890. And I'll come up here and let's do Hudson or Amaro. Doesn't really matter. Go ahead and run it. So you can see, again, I have a layer one copy. I also have this weird layer, but a layer one copy means that I got to come over here, grab my eraser, and erase the middle. 
so that we get that vignette look. And let's go ahead and just assume that we like this and that we're ready to move on. One little thing that you can do right now that will make the rest of this a lot easier is click on whatever your top layer, whatever your highest layer is in your layers palette. If you can click on that and select it, that's going to make this next step a lot easier. So just make sure you clicked on this very top layer. And now let's go into File, Open. And we want to look for period six, your folder. And we want to look in this Instagram folder that we put in there earlier using uh, Bridge. And we are looking for bottom bar.psd. So let's go ahead and open that up. And here it is. We've got a couple problems right off the bat with bottom bar. One, it's the wrong size. It's not going to match up with our selection right here. Two, it's got six layers. Yikes. We don't want six layers. We want all of these layers to only be one layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this little menu button in the top right hand corner of the layers palette. And I'm going to choose flatten image and that is going to smash all my layers together into one layer just like that. Perfect. Next, we need to resize this to be the same size as the width was of our selection over here. Well, that is pretty easy. To what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to image image size. This time we want to check the box that says resample. Make sure you get that checked. We want that resolution to stay 300. If that changes, bad things will happen. Remember, our resolutions have to match. Our photo is now 300, which means this must stay at 300. I'm going to go ahead and change my width. Mine was 2.9. Yours was almost certainly something different. Don't worry about the height. Photoshop will take care of that automatically for you. Just go ahead and press OK. You can see it got a little bit smaller. That's exactly what I wanted to happen. I'm going to go ahead and choose my move tool, keyboard shortcut V. It's right here. And I'm going to click and drag this up to my image. Come down here and drop it down. And it looks like if I zoom in here, that's going to line up perfectly. Wonderful. A couple of things might have gone wrong here. One, it was not the right size. It was either too big or too small. If that happened, you probably did not get your resolution correct. Come in here in this photo and go to image, image size. Make sure you're set to resolution. Maybe come over here to your layers palette on this layer one. And what you want to do is control click on this little thumbnail right here. That's going to bring up a selection around our photo again. Then we can go to window and choose info. And we can see our width and make sure we got the right number. If you didn't have that number right, that would explain why these don't match up. And if you do that, when you're done, remember to press Control D to make that selection go away. And then you can also check over here. Come in here and go to image, image size. You might not have been paying attention. If you left this unchecked and you changed this number, you can see my resolution changes. And now things don't add up, don't match up anymore. So make sure you left that checked. And then also, if you forgot, make sure you change it back to 300 and then get this back to the right size. If you did all of that, then it should match up no problem. One other huge problem that a lot of people have is they forgot to click on the top layer before they dragged this object over into the photo. And so what happens is that this, when it comes over, ends up being like down here. And you're like, ah, it's not even there. I can't even see it. Well, look what happened. It got caught up in this clipping mask. And clipping masks are weird. Weird things happen when you put something in a clipping mask. You can tell by that little weird arrow right there. And that's why we can't see it. So if that happens, make sure this layer two, what you want to do is move it up to the very top. And if it still has a clipping mask on it like that, still has that weird little arrow, you can right click and choose release clipping mask. Now, we could have avoided that from ever happening. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. If when we brought it over, we made sure we were clicked on this top layer. If you had this one selected, then when we brought it over, it would go in between those two. But because I click on here, well, get out of there, little dude. Now, when I bring that bottom bar over, it goes on the very top. And that's where I want it. One last weird thing that sometimes happens is this. Whoops, let me get rid of this. If you left your selection active like this, yeah, I have a selection here, and then I bring my bottom bar over, 
and I drop it in here just like that, you can see that part of it is inside of the selection and part of it is not. And whenever you have a selection, if you use the move tool and try to move things, it will only move what's inside of the selection. So you can see bad things just happen. So if that happens, just control alt Z. Before you move this, press control D to get your selection to go away. And then you can bring this down and drop it right into place. Okay, that's I think everything that could have gone wrong when you brought the bottom bar over. And um, hopefully it worked out perfectly and you could have just skipped the last two minutes of this video. I'm going to go ahead and close bottom bar and not save it. And now let's go to file open. And we're going to open up middle bar. Okay, middle bar is set up so that we can change the username and the location. Remember to change text that already exists. What you do is grab your text tool, keyboard shortcut T, and come in here and zoom in nice and close. And take a look at my cursor. See how it's got those dots around it? Those dots mean that if I click right now, I'm going to create a new line of text. Well, I don't want to do that. I want to edit text that already exists. So I'm going to move that cursor slowly down. Once those dots go away, that means that I can now edit text that already exists. So I'm going to select this text right here. I'm going to type in what I would like my Instagram username to be. And then remember, when you are done typing in Photoshop, you can either come up here and click this check mark, check mark right there, or press the Enter key over by the numbers. Now I'm going to move this cursor down, and I'm going to change my location. Again, look, it's got those dots around it, so I'm going to move it closer and closer until those dots go away. That means I can now select this text. And I can change this to uh, my location, which for this photo is the weight room. Again, press the Enter key by the numbers to tell Photoshop that you're done typing. Now we need to put a profile picture in here. And what we want is for a picture that we're going to use to pop right on top of this blue circle. Well, if you remember, if I come in here and click on layer one, which is the layer that my blue circle is on, yours might be different. You can tell if you can see that little blue circle in the thumbnail preview, that's how you know that's the layer. When I pull something else into this layer, it will show up right on top of layer one. Let's go ahead and go to File, Open. And let's find a photo to use for our profile picture. I'm just going to use this photo of these toys talking on top of this ladder. And I'm going to use the Stormtrooper's head for my profile picture because I don't really care what my profile picture is for this assignment. So I'm going to grab the rectangular marquee tool. I'm going to draw a selection around little stormtrooper's head. Again, you can move it around by clicking inside of it, or if you click outside of it, you can start and do a different one. And now that I've got that selection, I'm going to switch to the move tool, which is this dude right here. Keyboard shortcut is V, and then I'm going to click inside of the stormtrooper's head. I'm going to bring this up to middle bar, hold it there for a second, come down here, and let go. If everything went according to plan, you will have here in your layers palette, layer two will be on top of layer one. If it's not, if layer two ended up up here or up here, go ahead and just move layer two so that it's right above layer one in the layers palette. Again, yours may have different numbers, but we're looking for the layer that has the stormtrooper on it and the layer that has the blue dot on it. And we want the stormtrooper to be on top of the blue dot. Lastly, all we have to do is just right click on layer two, whatever layer has the stormtrooper on it, and choose Create Clipping Mask. And what that does is it tells Photoshop to show this layer as if it is coming through the blue dot. Well, this is clearly too big. It's not quite the right size, so I'm going to press Control T. And I can't even see my entire box because it's so big, so I'm going to zoom out. And then I'm going to hold down Shift and drag from the corners, just like so. And then if I need to, I'll let go of shift so that I can move this around a little bit easier. I'm going to put that little stormtrooper's head right in the middle, just like that. And then once again, I'll press enter. And there you go. I've got my middle bar finished. I've got my username, my location, and my profile pick. Let's come over here to my layers palette and click on this and choose flatten image. We want to mash all those layers together. If this is grayed out, it means you probably did not complete your control T, your free transform. So just click out of here, press enter to finish that free transform, and then come back in here and choose flatten image. Then we'll go again to image, image size. Make sure that resample is checked. Change your width to whatever your number is. 
and then press OK. Once again, grab your Move Tool, Keyboard Shortcut V, click and drag it up to this image right here, and then drop it into place right there. Again, hopefully you had layer your top layer selected so that this will come up at the very top. And I'm going to go ahead and just put that right there. And we are looking good. Look at my layers palette now. Here's the three layers that make up my Instagram filler filter. Here's the bottom bar right here is layer two. Here's layer three. It is that, that middle bar. So again, I'm going to leave layer three selected because I always want my top layer selected. And let's go to File, Open. And this time we're going to open up Top Bar. This one is super easy. It's already flattened. We don't have to make any changes. All we have to do is come over here and go to Image, Image Size. Change the width from 3 to whatever your number is. For me, that's 2.9. Press OK. Grab my Move Tool, Keyboard Shortcut V. Move this over to the image and drop it into place there and line it up. Beautiful. We did it. We finished this thing. We are done. Whew. Let's go ahead and save this up. A little file save. We probably should have done this throughout just in case something crashed. Let's put this in period six in your own folder. Put it here in Instagram or your Instagram is a live folder. I'm going to call this finished Instagram and make sure I save it as a Photoshop file. So go ahead and press save. It's done saving. Now I'm going to go to file, save as to save it again. Remember, we can't turn in Photoshop files on Flickr. So we got to come here, change this to a JPEG, not a JPEG 2000 or a JPEG stereo, just a regular JPEG. I'll leave it called finished Instagram. I'm going to make sure. I'm saving it in the right spot. Don't lose your file because you didn't pay attention to where it got saved. And I'm going to go ahead and press save. When this box pops up, anywhere from 8 to 10 is a good number to have in there. doesn't really matter. Then go ahead and press OK. Photoshop's going to save that up. And that's it. We are done. We can close this. We can upload it to Flickr. We can turn it in on Canvas. We did it. Congratulations.